Whoa, three, two, one. Hi there, this is Magic Brad with the Magic Brad Show. And I've got a concierge on today. His name is Michael. And I forgot his last name, but we don't need it because he's the concierge. You there, Michael? I am here. I am it's ready. Helm How key. are you doing today? It's Helm, Helm key. key. Yes, it is Helm Key. I even pronounced it right. Perfect. <laughs> That's a little play on words there because you're at the helm of the digital world and you're the key, right? Exactly. <laughs> yes. Sounds good. Yes. I'll See, use I that. that That's good. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? So what part of town are you in? Are you west or east? Or? I'm east. I'm in Egan, south of St. Paul. Oh, you're a local guy. Mm -hmm. I know where Egan is. I'm in Minneapolis or... You're still pretty far south. Yeah, pretty far south, yeah. It's yeah. warmer down there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm originally from California, but I like the weather here better, so I ended up here. The land of fruits and nuts. Yes. <laughs> I spent a couple years out there. I got some friends out there. Yeah. It's a good place to visit, but I hear you. I like the change of the seasons, you know? I do, too. I do, too. And I grew up in California, but I came to a point where I, where I realized daffodils blooming in January was just plain strange. And Something Santa, Santa Claus on Santa Monica Boulevard. Mm -hmm. no right, snow. right. Pulled by the flamingos, all that stuff, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So you yeah, married and got kids or single, wild, and crazy? Single for a while. I have grown children who just graduated from college, and they're wonderful. And uh, yeah, spending my go. time working and staying busy, staying Come safe. On. Kick them out of the nest, they can take care of you later on, right? Uh-huh. That's right. That's right. Well, let's talk a little bit about your business because I, I looked a little bit at it and it's I like that term digital concierge because that kind of says, you know, turn it over to you. If I got any questions, you can just take care of it. Right. Because yeah. you had some on here, email marketing and LinkedIn. You know Mike mm -hmm. O'Neill? I do. I do. Yep. He's a great guy. I, we've He's talked several times. Rock star, yeah. 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 He's, he's beyond me when he starts talking about that stuff. He's, he's on a whole <laughs> the, the, the sales navigator element, and I'm not mm -hmm. there. But he's, you probably resonate better with him. I, I get into the rock and roll music, but uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> the techie you know, part, I get lost. Yeah, we had some good conversations about LinkedIn. He's a cool guy. I like what he's doing. Yeah, well, neat. So give us a synopsis of your business, because if you just good the other overlying tech, that's pretty in-depth. It must right. narrow down into more the business marketing kind of thing, or are you the kind of guy when our mouse doesn't work, we should call you? It's more the business marketing side. So I started out in technology, writing software for many, many years, and got to a point where I really needed a change from that and fell into marketing and found I really loved the, the writing and the copywriting side of it. So making the messages, helping you get remembered and discovered by your best audience so okay where that kind of ended up was on the email side and i have this rather geeky passion for email marketing whether okay. it's the <laughs> the nuts and bolts of it or uh encouraging people to write more often which is often the biggest problem is not emailing enough so well, it's, it's definitely a, lot of fun. a different uh, world the whole writing thing the way i understood it when uh, i can't remember some of those gurus that teach it from way back you know the, right what the heck is the guy's name you must know his name well, there's gary halpert there's uh there's a bunch of people yeah, yeah. There, there there's there's a lot of illustrious it, wealthy copywriters yeah. and folks. the guy that kind of started it all back then was direct direct response mail mm -hmm. order kind of stuff right 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 but it's it's about each sentence goes to the next sentence and it kind of that's walks right. people down that path and that's all that's a skill man trying to hold someone when i see some of these long emails and i don't want to read that but then you see that last <laughs> where the period was and you go oh i think i'll read the next paragraph that's right that's right and so <laughs> that that's incredibly powerful for selling and a lot of people get intimidated by that and the secret is if you know who you're trying to write to, you know your audience, and they like you, all you have to do is be interesting. Right. You can just tell stories and bring people in and engage them, and they will read you regularly. Um, so it's not as daunting as it could be, and it doesn't require a PhD in direct response copywriting. 
Yeah, I think some people, when they get into that, they, they, they see the technology of the autoresponder and they think, this is so cool. I can send out an email first day, third day, seventh day, mm -hmm. and they see mm -hmm. the technology. But if their copy loses them on the first day, I don't care right. how many autoresponders you got. Right, right. <laughs> and the other side of that is a lot of people are simply intimidated by the autoresponder because there's all these things you have to plan out here, here, and here and get them to fire right. And there's all these buttons to push. And if you get it wrong, it's embarrassing. And I know this personally. Um, but you know, if you're just sending out a broadcast email to your audience a couple times a month, once a week, it's, it's pretty doable for most people, especially once it's set up. So even that, if it's, that's, uh, go ahead. It, even if it's even daily, I mean, if you've got an audience that you really resonate with, they're looking forward to getting your email. Like there was this guy, uh, Mike Dooley, he used to send this uh, email every day. It was just very small, mm -hmm. but it's basically just real encouraging and telling you how wonderful person you are and you yes. wanted to get them as opposed yes. to, oh God, another email. Yes. No, that, that's very true. Um, if you are writing to an audience that wants to hear from you, they're going to want to hear from you a lot. And some of it is, is even training because once you get on a schedule, I do three days a week for my marketing list. Once you get on a schedule, people begin to expect that. And yeah. if you miss a day, they notice and they ask, Hey, what's wrong? Right. Um, and okay? and it's, really, it's, it's really fun. Yeah. Are you okay? It's really fun to see that feedback. So absolutely. Um, if you're, if you know who you're writing to, you really can't write too often, um, as long as what you're writing really resonates with that audience and, and is what they want to hear. Yeah, unless it can't be too much, but they, they can save it and read it later kind of mm -hmm. thing if they really resonate with it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So my background has been in the event industry and since this COVID thing came along, it put the screeching halt on everything, events, yes. hospitality, travel, and tourism. So yes. I've uh, shifted gears and went into 100% of online and I'm trying to create like a hybrid of the events because a, a meetup or a webinar is still an event. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's more of like one person and a screen of 20 or something. It's just not right. the same as going to a, a live function. Mm -hmm. but I'm using some of my strategies for that. So that kind of gets into the umbrella of the digital marketing. Mm -hmm. What kind of things do you do in the digital marketing area? Um, a lot of it has to do with helping. So I can speak conceptually or, or in detail technically. I see a lot of it as helping you be remembered. So if you have an event, you want to make sure that people are thinking about that event and that they have a, a way that reminds them of it, that doesn't offend them, that keeps them engaged, that keeps them interested in more. And so a lot of what I see as the hard part for people is the strategy behind it. How do you plan out a messaging campaign to make that go? And then, you know, that could be a series of videos sent by email. It could be a social media marketing campaign. It could be paid traffic driven to landing pages and things like that. All of those things are possible. Um, it really depends on a case by case basis, what's going to work best and then very carefully measuring the results. Because as you know, if you do marketing and don't measure it, you don't know what's working and what's not working. Oh, and for sure. And it's really, really hard to even measure it because there's so many places a person could drop off or something because everything's so interconnected. You know, you're watching yes. a video and you wonder why you're not getting any video views. It's because they went and watched it on YouTube instead of on your page or vice mm -hmm. versa. And the stuff that you do is can be very complex. It's it's very surgical. You gotta you gotta know what you're doing to put all that stuff together so that it works. And I know because I've been in it, but I don't have the <laughs> <laughs> Well and, and that's one of the things that I I focus on and I, I, I treat it almost as part of my brand, which is keeping things as simple as possible. There's that's here. There's so much you can do. So on the one side, you can get excited by all the tools and all the bells and whistles and the shiny objects and do like 50 step funnels. On the other side, if you came to me and you're doing a new event and it's totally new, you've never shown it to an audience before, the best thing to do is do something really simple and possibly something really simple and manual where you send out invitations, people fill out a Google form, 
you manually move some data around because until you know it's a thing you want to invest in, it's not the right time to put a huge investment in all these complicated things. If you yeah. come to me with something where you've already got a bunch of traffic and you've already done 10 events already, then that's something that's easier to scale because we know what's working and we can just do more of that. Yeah, when you get into the digital world, it's, uh, it's easy for someone just to miss it and you could, you could miss a, a cog in the machine. Mm -hmm. And then if you're missing a gear, the wheels ain't gonna turn. So that right. whole series has to be all in place. And right. that's what I'm doing now is taking some of the stuff that I had with the, with the live event stuff it was like mailing a postcard physical mm -hmm. postcard mm -hmm. now it's more of an email or a social media post or something like that but that right. can you know shiny objects or can disappear and i was interested in going there but where was that i can't find it now mm -hmm. so it's, it's it's a whole nother animal and i think what a lot of marketers end up making a mistake of doing is bridging too far mm -hmm. where they didn't take someone to the next step they kind of took them to the next leap and the person says i'm not jumping across that chasm and, and that's, that's a really good point. That's, that's the mistake that 80%, 90% of people make. They try and sell too soon. They, cool. they figure, well, I'm going to send this email. There's the pitch. Do this, 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 and buy now. And then no one buys now. Whereas you have to choose very carefully what the next step is. Often it's, well, click here or schedule a meeting or something really, really soft that, that gets them gently to the next step. Yeah, the a notorious industry for that is the good old multi-level marketing industry mm -hmm. where you, you pay 500 bucks and you got an opportunity to create a business and they just start selling. But right. they, haven't, they haven't started any introduction or relationship building. And right. I got a friend that's sort of like on the top of that whole multi-level marketing mm -hmm. world, Eric Worre. And I was talking with him about, I think that industry should have a probation period where they buy it. But just like a franchise, you know, you go through some time to get educated about the, the business. Right. You shouldn't be able to just, oh, I got my links. I'm going to go tell everybody <laughs> because all you do is you piss off your family and friends and they never want to mm -hmm. talk to you again. Mm -hmm. So that this is an important message for those type of marketers, too, that they need to slow down a little bit. Right? Be a little more, uh, you know, a lot of people use the dating analogy, you know. Mm -hmm. you don't just go walking up to somebody, kiss them, say, no, let's get married and have kids. <laughs> no, exactly. That, that's very close to it um, as well. And I think this works in dating as well. You keep your options open and you, you don't get too attached to any one prospect. You, you just keep, keep doing the action, keep getting out there, keep doing the same thing and see what filters into being a real customer or, or a, a spouse. So do you get into like building out funnels and landing pages and all mm -hmm. that with something like yeah. Archer or... Yeah, um, I do. Um, I, I'm using WordPress and I have tools that make it easy to put together landing pages oh, yeah. on WordPress sites. And so um, those are straightforward and hooking those into email systems or sales pages or things like that. Those are all just basic tools. And that's, that's kind of where the, the digital concierge concept, I think, shines, where because of my tech background, I don't really think of those as difficult. It's just, yeah, we need to do that, 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 and that, and I can just right. go or have my team go and check the boxes and get them all done. And it's like, whatever, it's technology. It works for us. That, that's what I say to people a lot of times, like they don't want to like hire somebody else. I can do it myself. Mm -hmm. And they don't realize that 80% of doing it yourself is learning how to do it. <laughs> then right. you can do it. And now right. that three weeks is gone, you could have paid this person to just get it done. Yeah, and it would have been done in a couple of days. Totally. Yeah. Or less. Yeah. I mean, some of this mm -hmm. stuff nowadays, and you, you might look at a landing page and go, oh, I'll just duplicate it mm -hmm. <laughs> and right. change the name. And ta da, right. that's what the, I use Kartra, which is kind of like ClickFunnels. Exactly. Yeah. Just yeah. Duplicate Things duplicate a whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've, I've, I haven't used that one, but I've seen it. And there's a lot of tools like that that make it really simple for even relatively non technical people to put together some pretty complicated sales funnels. Well, it's a little bit of a blessing and a curse with all this stuff now. Like, uh, you know, back in the day you had to, like if you're going to do a, like a video, you had to hire a production crew and a camera crew mm -hmm. and actors and <laughs> get a, a venue that you could use. And now there's software. You just, you don't have to do anything. Really, You just download mm -hmm. it. I know. Words I know. No, I've been playing, I mean, Zoom is 
Zoom is just an interesting platform for doing interviews. And then if you want to get fancy, there's things like Open Broadcast Studio, which gives you a whole TV production studio on your computer and stuff. And it's, oh, really, yeah. it's really crazy what's possible now. I'm using StreamYard for my... Mm, yeah, that, that looked like a lot of fun. I looked at that for a few days once. Do you like it? I, I, I really do because it's a lot simpler. You know, Zoom has these a lot of little check boxes. And if you do this, mm -hmm. it does that. But if you do mm -hmm. that and that, it's going to do this. And my brain gets fried. <laughs> Whereas StreamYard is pretty simple. You can stream to multiple Facebook, Periscope, YouTube, LinkedIn. And then it's That's got- right, at the same things. at the same time, right? Yeah. Which is yeah. good and bad because if you've got people commenting and you're on Facebook and they're commenting and you don't see it, they get a little upset. So you got to I love the fact that it would let you put the comment as a lower third over your video as you're talking about it. Right. As you do that, you, you just click on it and it just brings it in. Yeah, that was really cool. It's got the ability to put uh, backgrounds and forwards on it. Little. Mm -hmm. So I like it and it's, it's simpler to use. You can schedule or you can just record. In fact, what... What I do with this after I get to know somebody using Zoom like this, if you want to do another one, we do another one. And then I create those little digital concierge.com. Mm, yeah. So that when we're talking, we can place that in there. Right, right. And it just uh, adds a little bit more to it because you can point at it and go, if you want to contact, you just, it's kind of like doing an infomercial. And that's no, exactly. But remember, in the old days, you needed to have a technical director to run all that stuff. And <laughs> StreamYard looks like it was simple enough that you can probably run it while you're moderating the, the, the conversation. Exactly. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a one person operation. Yeah, one man video band. And it, it, it works good like that. Um, there's a guy that I interviewed. Um, he's out in Vegas and his name is Bob Doyle. He's got a something where there's a little crowd of people that come up to the bottom and all of a sudden they stand up and they stay there. They're applauding like this and then they, then they hide back down. <laughs> kind of so like mystery, mystery science theater. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> so it's kind of cool having some of that stuff, but the more that those little things you add, the more things that can go wrong. So yeah, I try and keep things as simple as I can. My philosophy on marketing is plant the seed, nurture the plant, harvest the fruit. Mm -hmm. so it really is. Just find out who the lead is. And then be really nice to them until they want to buy it, and they'll just buy mm -hmm. it. Right, right. But uh, trying to find that person and get that alignment, I use the other uh, analogy of like you're selling uh, at your steakhouse and you're selling hamburgers and chicken, and you're marketing to vegans and vegetarians. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to work. Not going to work. No. So you got to no. get that alignment. And I think a lot of people make a mistake when they're doing their marketing. They don't, uh, they don't think through who their audience is. Mm -hmm. If they have any money, like, like all the bots, bots don't have credit cards. <laughs> right. If you got likes and follows, they, they don't mean nothing. Right. Right. Well, and also people make assumptions about who they think their market is without asking questions. The, oh. The power of asking questions is, is divine. You can find out so much just from talking to a bunch of people, not even trying to sell them. Just learn about what their day-to-day -day life is. What, what keeps them up at night? What do they think about during the day? Why is their Monday so hard? And not only do you find out what their problems are, but when you talk to them, they, you relate to them better because they recognize that you know their pains and it oh. makes it so much easier. I was just talking to a guy, he's uh, been going through multiple uh, episodes of cancer mm. and he was telling me that whole story and it's got to suck. And I says, you know what, maybe it's a blessing and a curse. Why don't, maybe that's your niche, you know, because he's an affiliate marketer. How about mm. affiliate marketing for survivors? Right. And resonate with those people. Right. Right. And go for that niche. And it might be, that's maybe that's where he's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And if people know that it's much easier rather than trying to sell a tenderloin to a vegan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Anything that makes you stand out is a good thing. Well, what I do with these, um, I put them up to YouTube after this, and then I put some links and stuff in there. So that's what I'll do with your, uh, your domain name and stuff. I'll put that in there. Okay. Very good. Um, if you want to do one of these later down the road, maybe on a specific uh, vertical or something, some kind of a uh, a campaign or something, I'm always open to that. And that's where okay. we use StreamYard and kind of put certain things in there. You might have some, some programs or something. And it's kind of cool because you can put your domain slash, you know, free gift kind of stuff. And it's right there. Nice. People can nice. see it. Right. It's a little right. easier way to do it. And then you propagate the video all over the place. And who knows who might find it? <laughs> well, Michael, I appreciate you being our concierge tonight. 
I'm going to uh, get to work. I'll get this up and I, I work fast. I'll get it up there in about an hour. I'll show wow. You. Okay. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Let's do it again. Peace. Let's do it again. <laughs> Peace.